Mary hath chosen that good part which shall not be taken from her. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Well, a glance into your bulletin will tell you that I am the last thing you should have had to be afraid of this morning. <laughs> Father Dow is with his father. Uh, Mr. Henry is undergoing hip surgery this morning. He fell and broke his hip. And so that is where Father Dow is today. And I would invite you all to uh, join us all in prayer for Mr. Henry and for the Sanderson family. Uh, Mary has chosen that good part which shall not be taken from her. Uh, this is one of those uh, phrases of scripture which is perhaps misunderstood by us all. Uh, we look at the story of Mary and Martha and we have come up with thoughts about how Mary uh, stands for the contemplative life, the, I the idea of prayer and study, and that Martha, on the other hand, she stands for the life of, of active service. Get, you know, get the job done, serve the poor, while on the other hand, some get to spend their time just in prayer at the prayer desk. Um, that's a kind of a misconstruction of the gospel, at least according to what St. Luke is trying to convey to us. Um, we are confronted today with a story about one of those important Christian duties which we kind of tend to overlook from time to time because what, what we see is we see this story paired with the story uh, from Genesis which is known by the name the hospitality of Abraham. And if you read the story along with the lecture this morning, you will realize that the guest who showed up at Abraham's house was none other than the Holy Trinity himself. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, those three men who dropped by just accidentally one day showed up and Abraham had to say, well, Lordy, what am I going to do? I have company. I'm going to have to do something about my guests. Well, that's the story that brings Mary and Martha's story into uh, a little clearer focus. And to do that, I'm going to give you a sample of a story from, guess where? Upper Berkeley County. <laughs> and because it's the only thing I really know about. That's, you know, I can't tell you about anything from Dorchester County. Never heard of it, never been there. But <laughs> Upper Berkeley, I've got a good handle on. And the story comes right out of my own house. It's about my mother who in her day was the giver of elaborate dinner parties. I'm talking about five course meals that had hors d'oeuvre before. Notice I said hors d'oeuvre, not hors d'oeuvres. She was very strict about that. French is, does not pronounce the last S. And then, of course, it went on and on afterwards. And the thing that sat in the middle of the dining room table was the great big platter of chocolate fudge, which was like dessert course number three. That was the thing that kept calling my name. But these elaborate dinners with China to serve everything, you know, one, not, not just a plate, but five plates with cups and so on, and blah, blah, blah. And the China was so enormous in our house that it spilled out of all the cabinets that are there to hold the China, and it was packed under those same, packed under the cabinets and under the bed. So if you were going to bed in the house and you stumped your toe, it was probably on some platter rather than a shoebox like normal people. So we had all this stuff, giant piles of stuff to do these things with. Lisa knows what I'm talking about because I took half of it under cover of darkness to my house and Lisa just doesn't know what to do with it. She's stumping her toes on the, on the stuff that has been bootlegged out of Berkeley County and down here to simple Charleston where y'all don't do things as elaborately as we do up yonder. So we've got that in the background. Now my mother is a good example of not only just Mary but Martha too. A very careful uh, attention to detail for her guests and but also a good disciple 
as Mary is displayed in the gospel today. One who sat at the feet of Jesus and listened to his words. What does that have to do with hospitality, I wonder? Is not hospitality the elaborate display, uh, making sure all the china is lined up? You all are Downton Abbey people, how the china is lined up according to inches and all that kind of thing. Is that hospitality or is Mary hospitality? Well, think about that for just a moment. The hospitality of Abraham, the supreme guest, the big other one shows up at your dinner table. It happens every night in your house, by the way. You may just not be paying attention. But the other comes into your meals. And because the other comes into your meals, your meals are not just sitting around a carcass, a chicken carcass, looking to carve up, you know, the drumstick for me. But your meal is a participation in the sacrifice that that lovely roast chicken represents. Something died in order that you could live. You are eating so that you may live. Does it sound like anything else that you know about? Something died and feeds you so that you may live. That's what takes place at your dinner table. That's where hospitality begins. The hospitality that Abraham provided was the best that he had, but he did not neglect his guests. He sat with his guests. He listened to what his guests had to say and offered the best hospitality there was. He offered what he could put before his guest and he offered the guest himself. That's the key to the Mary and Martha story. Not the contemplative life, not the active life, as though they were two parts of two different stories. They are one thing. Yes, hospitality involves giving the best you have to those who show up at your dinner table. But that is not the total story about hospitality. Hospitality means receiving your guests the way your guests need to be received. The hospitality that you offer is to, if the prophet Jesus comes to your dinner table, then you treat Jesus the way Jesus should be treated. Mary does that. She sits at his feet and listens to his words. One receives a guest the way the guest wishes to be received. Remember I told you a few weeks ago the whole middle part of St. Luke's Gospel is the story of his acceptance, rejection, or just being ignored. Well, what do Mary and Martha represent? Total acceptance with all that goes with it, setting the best before the guest and giving the guest what the guest wishes to be given. In Jesus' case, attention to his word. This whole middle part is set in the context of the Good Samaritan, the priest and the Levite, you know, the ones wearing the cope and the beretta, they walk by on the other side and they ignore the guest, the needy guest in their midst. Then the defensive lawyer, the lawyer who wants to know, well, just who is my neighbor? Well, nobody that I'm particularly concerned about. I'm sure that there is a rule for it. Well, are these stories of acceptance or rejection? Well, I think you know. I think you know exactly what's going on. Today, Mary and Martha represent the alternative the actual receiving of a guest with hospitality the way a guest wishes to be received. Jesus is the guest. Jesus is the host. Jesus is the reason why we worry about hospitality. The way to receive Jesus is to receive his word. And when we have done that, we have chosen 
that good part which shall not be taken from any of us. And because there's nothing written down here today, I'm just going to stop right here because Lisa keeps time and she walks out the room at 15 minutes. So I'm figuring that I'm ahead of the game and I'm going to give you all a break. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen.